Today we celebrate the Feast of Pentecost. We remember the third person of the Trinity. The third person of the Trinity is a silent worker, but his work is tremendous. He is powerful. The scripture tells us the disciples were hiding. They were hiding in fear behind closed doors. They were shutting themselves from the rest of the world, which was hostile, persecuting, terrifying. They felt better clustered together in isolation and planning what to do next and where to go. Then, their surprise. Into their isolation, Jesus comes. Through the closed doors, he walks. Their reaction must have been of surprise. Then joy when they realized it was Jesus. He tells them to get out of their isolation and their fear, to go out and announce the good news. You are the bearer of the gospel the announcers of the salvation and forgiveness. You must go. You have a mission. But they are scared and unsure. So Jesus promises them the Holy Spirit because the Spirit will enable them to do what they cannot do by themselves. So Jesus tells in today's scriptures to them, the gospel reading, I have many things to tell you, but it will be more for you to bear. But when the spirit of truth comes, he will lead you to the complete truth. That is the same spirit, the same spirit which was moving on the waters when God created the heaven and earth. The same spirit who spoke in the Old Testament to the prophets, same spirit who overshadowed young girl Mary, and she became the mother of God. The same spirit descended on the apostles in fire of tongues and transformed, transformed fear disciples into heroes. One question that can pop up in our mind is that, is the same spirit still working amidst us? Is the same spirit working still? Let me share, in brief, the synopsis of Mother Teresa's life from Father Bob's reflection. You now, Mother Teresa originally belonged to an order called Sisters of Loreto, which is a cloistered teaching order. She was sent to a community school in India. It was 1947, and India became independent. As soon as that happened, there was a clash between Hindus and Muslims. They were slaughtering each other. It was a civil war. For the first time, for the first time in 15 years, Mother Teresa left the cloister just to find food for the girls. That day, over 5,000 had been killed, 15,000 wounded. Mother Teresa came back to her cloister, a chained woman. Out of fear, the sisters would not, would not leave the convent again. But Mother Teresa said she felt the Holy Spirit was calling her, calling her to do something about what she had seen. So she did something unheard of. She asked to leave the cloister and to live among people. She moved out. The turning point came when she found a woman dying on the streets. Mother Teresa went in search of help, but there was no one, no hospitals. There was no place for care, to care this woman. So she took her to her small rented room, took care of her. Soon, 
someone gave her a house. She gathers more poor and dying from the street slowly one after the other. But then she was overwhelmed by so many poor. But more volunteers came, more houses, and now we have over 3,000 sisters of charity all over the world. In the biography, Mother Teresa speaks of surprise. At her age, time, and place, would she, could she do something different, be someone different? She was like the apostles, hiding behind the closed doors of her cloister convent. She said, Christ surprised me. He came through the locked doors, breathed his Holy Spirit on her. He called her to a second vocation. The Spirit is full of surprises. We have all received the same Spirit. How does the Holy Spirit work in my life? How does he surprise me? How did he surprise the disciples? When the Holy Spirit was poured on the apostles, they spoke in tongues. Others smoking said to them, these men are drunk. This was the way in which the Lord's promises came to fulfillment. No one puts new wine into new Wine into old wine skin, new wine is put into fresh wine skin, and so both are preserved. The disciples wear the new wine skin wherein the Holy Spirit was poured. The Holy Spirit filled them, so they were filled to the brim with that zeal, zeal of the Holy Spirit. By this spectacular miracle, they became sign of the Catholic Church which embraces the language of every nation. Pentecost, the coming of the Holy Spirit, was the event of showering the disciples with the gifts of the Holy Spirit, gathered together working for the kingdom of God, that is church. It is now called church. Thus today is also considered the birthday of the church. The birth, which is a gift, has a task. The church presents herself as agent of reconciliation between God and man. As we remember this, what happened in the lives of the apostles, we are also reminded of our responsibilities. We have the same gift that the apostles received. We receive them in baptism, confirmation, we have the same spirit. In confirmation, we become the soldiers of Christ, not anymore trying to avoid the evil, but trying to fight the evil one. One who has the spirit should be alive and kicking. Alive because of the presence of the gifts, kicking because of the need to trample the temptations and advances of the devil. The battle is not only the physical or material, it is also spiritual. With the spirit within us, with the spirit within us, let us fight back like the apostles. Amen.